Hi, my name is Denise Hurley, and this is another episode of Harmonies. Um, I'm here with Kim Mober. Good morning. Who is, uh, hi, Kim. How are you? <laughs> um, and she is a singer-songwriter, so she's here today with me to talk about what's going on in her life. So, uh, so Kim, could you start off with one of your songs, please? Sure, I'd be happy to. Thanks very much for inviting me on your show. I'm super, super happy to be here. This is a song I wrote. Um, I, I lost my sister to breast cancer a couple of years ago, and um, when we got the word that uh, her passing was close, I hopped a bus from Cape Cod, Massachusetts, where I live, to northern New Jersey, where she was, and hoping to make it in time to say goodbye. Um, I didn't, and this song is about that. It's called Angels Fly. In a seat by the window, southbound on Angels fly. 
Quite welcome. My, that was gorgeous. Thank you very much. Very, very nice. Hmm. Okay. Um, so, Kim, you're a singer-songwriter in this region, I understand, locally? Yes. Yep. I perform throughout New England. Well, I did before the pandemic. And right. interestingly enough, with the pandemic, the kind of one of the pluses is live streaming and um, I've been able to do, I've been invited to do some live stream shows. Uh, for instance, a couple of days ago, I did one with my friend Grace Morrison at a music series in, in Tucson, Arizona, which, you know, probably wouldn't have happened, you know, otherwise. Right, so, mm -hmm. right. So it's, so this whole experience has some, opened some doors for you. A little uh, bit. Yeah, interesting, mm -hmm. interesting. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about your journey as a singer-songwriter? How did you start and what have you been doing? Sure. It start, well, you know, my mom was a classical pianist. Mm -hmm. She was born um, in Juneau, Alaska, as was I. And she's a, we are both native uh, Tlingit is the name of the tribe. Okay. From southeastern Alaska. And mm -hmm. um, she was a class classical pianist from the time that she was six years old. So music was in our house always. Mm -hmm always growing up and she um, was a lover of all genres she loved jazz she loved rock she loved singer songwriter and so when i was about 14 years old um, she wanted to earn a little bit of extra money so she opened up uh, guitar lessons to the kids in our neighborhood she taught herself to play guitar and decided to um, teach the kids in the neighborhood and to earn my lessons i had to type up the lyric sheets you know <laughs> for the other students sure. you know and um i took a year of guitar from her and um kind of been self-taught since then okay. and um you know i learned to play strumming along to my favorite singer songwriters jackson brown and carol king james taylor you know folks like that but I had, um, I had really bad stage fright. My mom was a ham, and she loved being in front of people, but um, I did not inherit any of that. Um, at least for a long time in the beginning, I had just really debilitating stage fright. Okay. And um, couldn't perform in front of people, even though it was something that I really, really wanted to do. And, you know, I went along, and music was my, my hobby, you know, mm -hmm. and my guitar was my buddy during the really lean, kind of poor times. And um, I had a career in the banking industry for a very long time. And, you know, got married and raised our kids. And in 2008, I want to say eight, maybe a little bit later than that, no, probably 2010, bought my first real good guitar. The first guitar I had was a very old, um, it was a Gibson Epiphone, and the, it was like 180 bucks, and the action was like this far above the fretboard. It was very difficult to play. So I invested in my first guitar, I got a Martin guitar, and playing became so much more joyful and easy mm -hmm. on, a, on a decent instrument. And so I expanded my, my song list, and I learned a whole bunch more songs, and set out to kind of overcome that stage fright and okay. started started going to open mics in mm -hmm. the area. Yeah. Well, that, that's the best way for someone starting out to, to hone their craft is going to the open mics in the area and trying things out. And that helped you uh, overcome your stage fright? It did. It took a long time. It took over mm -hmm. a year of doing it pretty much every week. Okay. You know, I'd go back and, and luckily the open mic that I went to to begin with was extremely supportive. Like the, sure. the person that ran it, um, we ended up being very close friends and, and um, it was just such a welcoming and wonderful environment mm -hmm. that um, it felt safe for me to go back and do it again and again and again. And then I kind of finally left that stage fright right there in that little room. So it's been, and then it's been wonderful because then I started, um, you know, doing little gigs here and there like farmer's markets and okay. um, 
I started doing some um, fundraiser type things. And little by little, it just got more comfortable and better for me. And then in 2014, I wrote my first song. So nice. that's kind of where it all started. Okay. Um, so you mentioned now that um, with the uh, pandemic, you're doing a lot of online live streaming. What's that like for you today? Um, it, um, I know it's different, but tell me a little bit about how you feel about what's going on with you today. Well, it's, it's, it's very different. And just like everybody, we're all kind of, you know, struggling and, and wondering if things are ever going to get back to normal. I mean, there's some positives about it, but at the same time, there's, you know, you know, there's nothing like live music, right? Exactly. There's nothing like enjoying it. I mean, cause that's what it's all about for me. It's about the community. It's about connection. It's about empathy. And so, you know, you don't get that same feeling when you're playing to a screen. Right. right. But the, the plus side is I had to learn, you know, I had to kind of up my game and, and to be able to sound good and look decent on a live stream, I had to learn some new skills, which mm -hmm. I probably would not have learned otherwise. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. I, I agree with you there. The, the Zoom is something I started learning more about just so I could do these interviews and yeah. do other kinds of interviews. So it's been fun to, to learn the new, um, new technology that we have. But, and I agree, I run a music series and it's, uh, it's tough not being able to start it this fall, you know? So we all have to kind of wait and see what's next. But, um, but so, okay. Um, but it is more difficult. The difficult part, of course, is you know trying to earn earn a living doing right. it. Right. You know, exactly. You know, it's it's satisfying to be able to to have that avenue, you know, of live streaming to to go and perform and connect with people. But you know, my calendar just went blank like everybody yeah. else's. You know. Yeah. So, um, so you you do see. I mean, I mean, I'm hopeful that. Perhaps by next year we'll be back to some kind of normal. And um, will you still include the live streaming as well as the live performances? Do a little bit of both. I think a lot of people are leaning toward just that. You know, mm -hmm. I I I'm a, stay connected with a lot of music friends and and people in the industry that um, you know that are at all levels technical people musicians and and this group of people that i meet with each week we all kind of seem to agree that live stream is definitely here in one form or another to stay you know even when people get back together mm -hmm. you know? and it's making a lot of musicians that i know almost kind of rethink a little bit how they're going to be presenting their music later on because you know touring can be very tough can be very yes. tough and so um i know a lot of you know full-time touring musicians who are feeling like you know at first it was a really tough adjustment they kind of felt a little you know restricted and then now they're kind of settling in saying you know i wonder if there are other ways that i can do this because i miss being with my family or you know right I didn't realize how kind of tired I was, mm -hmm. for, you know, mm -hmm. touring, you know. So it's, I think we're in a shift right yeah. now. We're yeah. in a big shift. Yeah, I agree. Um, now I saw um, that you are involved at RISA. Rhode Island Songwriters Association. Yes. yes. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Well, it's a, it's a fabulous and supportive organization of people. Um, and they have this one, well, they have a number of different ways that they support musicians and, and give us kind of a, a platform and a place to be able to share our music. And one of them, they have this songwriters in the round and um, four performers get to get on stage and do songs in the round. Mm -hmm. But... Um, one of the songs that you play has to be a song that you've written from a prompt that was provided by audience members of the prior month's event. Oh. So, you know, at the end of each one, they ask everybody to come up with an idea for a prompt for a song. They throw those little pieces of paper in a basket and pick one randomly. 
send out an email to the next month's performer saying, you know, you have 30 days to write a song that has this prompt in it. And it's really, it's a fun exercise. I'd never, until then, I'd never written a song kind of in the constraint, you know? Right. And it's a good exercise, really, because it makes you really think and focus and move. But what I found most interesting was all the different takes of the different performers, you know, what they came up with that were so <laughs> different than mine. Like yep. the, very, for the very first one I did, and I'll play that song maybe, Here Be Dragons is a song I wrote, and the prompt was Dragons. Okay. So it forced me to, you know, at first I was like, what in the world am I going to do with this? You know, I don't even know anything about dragons. So I went to Google and the first thing that came up was um, the phrase, here be dragons. And I learned that cartographers years ago would use that phrase to kind of denote areas that were unexplored or dangerous. And so I wrote a song around that where the character in the song finds herself in a position that she's never been in before. And it could very well be a dangerous situation. But the other three songwriters that were there that night wrote amazing songs that were completely different, but still using that same prompt. <laughs> so it was fun to see the creativity that sure. happens around that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. Okay. Um, now you mentioned a little bit about your influences growing up. Um, so is there any one in particular that a uh, musician that has influenced your music or uh, that you like the most? That's so, I, because of my, my mom's, you know, the way I grew up, it, the, my favorite song or my favorite artist kind of changes like every minute. Oh yeah. You know, I hear <laughs> okay. something and you know, and I, I love jazz. Bill Evans is one of my absolute favorite jazz musicians. Um, but I love rock. I grew up, you know, as a 70s kid listening to The Who and Queen and mm -hmm. David Bowie. I'm a big fan of all of that music. But at the same time, like I said, singer-songwriter. But now contemporary music, my, the, the things that I'm listening to now are people like Lori McKenna, Sarah mm -hmm. Jaros, um, um, my friends Ordinary Elephant. They're a fabulous mm -hmm. duo. They're one of my favorite. Gillian Welch, I absolutely love. Okay. So it's all over the place. <laughs> all over the place. All okay. Over the place. <laughs> okay. Um, can you talk to me about your song, Josephine? Oh, that was a t that was a ton of fun to write. You know, every songwriter has a different approach to how they how they write. And for me, it's always the guitar lick that comes first. It's always the chord progression. My guitar is kind of like a Ouija board. If I pick it up, things start happening and then I'll hear, I'll play around with a progression and then I'll hum a melody to it. And then the lyrics are always the hardest for me. That's, that's the one that takes the, the most amount of time because after I get the melody and the guitar part, I sit there and have to think, what in the world is this song actually about? And what's the story that I want to tell with it? Mm -hmm. And so that's what happened with Josephine. And the, um, let's see, the part here that goes, the bass part, that one, two, three. Um, in my head for the longest time, I thought that was going to be, it fit Josephine, you know, the syllables. But um, I actually don't sing it to that. But once I heard the Josephine, I'm like, oh, this has to be about my great-grandma, my great-grandma Jo, okay. who um, I absolutely adored. And she passed away when I was about, oh, I want to say, in my early 20s. And she was in her 90s, but she was, she was a spitfire of a woman. You know, she really had a lot of spirit, and she had a great sense of humor, but um, she had a very, very tough life, a very tough life. Mm -hmm. So the song is about her and her three marriages. Okay. Yeah. And, but it was, it was a ton of fun to write. And then I started playing, um, with my good friend, Heather Swanson about three years ago. She's a fabulous, uh, violin fiddle player. And, you know, she came up with a really great riff, a violin, a fiddle riff for that tune too. So it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
So going forward, do you have any projects in the works uh, that um, we should know about? Well, I do a number of things locally, and um, one of the things I'm going to be working on coming up is um, here on Cape Cod um, in the town of Sandwich, I had founded the uh, Sandwich Porch Fest, which is an event that's going into its, I think it's fifth year this year. And, you know, it stemmed from seeing other porch fests, you know, mm -hmm. around the country, and particularly one here on the Cape in Wellfleet that I had been invited to perform at. You know, it's a number of musicians, and you play old-fashioned, you know, porch fest way the way they used to, you know, completely unplugged on people's porches, and the community gets to just walk through and stop and listen to musicians throughout the afternoon. It's, it's a lot of fun. And so I brought the idea to the Sandwich Arts Alliance, which is an organization I belong to here in the Cape, and presented it to them. And they said, this sounds like a, you know, a great fit for our community. Let's do it. And it's gotten more successful each year. Last year, we had almost 3,000 attendees come. And it's you know, fabulous. There were 20 musicians on 20 different porches in historic Sandwich. So it's a beautiful okay. setting. But this year we're going to be bringing it online. So um, that's what I'm going to be working on mostly for the next probably month or two. And I have a bunch of new songs. So I'm trying to finish writing the other probably five that I have partially done and working towards another recording project too. So your new songs, um, where, where did you get your your storyline for those songs coming up. Can you talk a little bit about that? <laughs> um, well, yeah, a couple of them. Like there's one that's called I'll Always Be a Friend. And okay. that, that one, I was thinking about songs like, you know, Carol King songs and James Taylor songs that have lasted for, mm -hmm. you know, for however many years it's been, 40 years, like songs like You've Got a Friend. Okay. And they're easy to remember and the Chords are not very hard, but it, they're songs that resonate with people because it means something, because it's about a topic that means something. And for me, aside from my family, my friends, you know, as a, as a military brat, I've traveled all over the country, and my friends are very, very important to me, and I have some who I've kept in touch with that I haven't even seen since I was, you know, 14 years old, but we stay in touch. Mm -hmm. So my friends are very important to me. So that was the um, inspiration for that song, I'll Always Be a Friend. And it's really just a, a, a simple but heartfelt song about, you know, we're going through tough times, but I'm here and mm. I'll always be here. So that's a, one of them. And there's another one that I just finished um, called um, Brimstone and Fire. And oh. it's actually the story of Moses. It's about Moses. Okay. Yeah, Moses on the mountain, you know, because I was sitting there thinking, you know, this, the political times that we're in right now, and we're so divided as a country, and there's just, uh, there's so much bad feeling out there, and I'm thinking, you know, if Moses was around today, if he just walked in everyone's life today, mm -hmm. how would that story pan out? Would it be something that lasted forever? Probably not, you know, so it made me think about that, and, you know, I wrote that song. Okay. Um, I read that you like to really give back to your community with a lot of different uh, charities and fundraisers. Um, and I look, I mean, we talked about the Sandwich uh, Area Alliance and then the Gregville Coffee House open mic. That, is right. that something you started as well? It is. And then the other one was uh, vine grass, which I thought was very interesting. Well, I didn't start that. That, okay. that that's a, that's an organization that's founded by uh, musician Monica Rizzio, okay, and her and her husband Pete Fasano. And I do work for them. I volunteer okay. for them, and I'm on their board of directors. But um, she had founded that organization to help um, provide money to students who want to study music. So it's a really mm -hmm. really good organization. Okay, yeah. and um, and then the Craigville uh, open mic that was just something. Uh, obviously, that's not happening right now. But is was that 
something that you wanted to do. Um, is that the one you talked about that you went to that was welcoming or is that a different one? No, the, the, the one that was welcoming was at a local, um, was at a local restaurant called the Harvest Gallery Wine Bar. And oh. it used to happen every Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. And it was hosted by my friend Kathleen Healy. Okay. And, um, but the Craigville Coffee House open mic, I started about, I want to say four years ago, four mm -hmm. years ago. Because I got my start, I lost my stage fright, you know, through open mics, and I okay. wanted to be able to give back and provide the same kind of setting and um, environment for other people in my own town. Okay. Because the, because the harvest one isn't in my town. It's about, you know, 25 minutes away from me. Okay. So I wanted to do it here in my own town, and I approached the library, you know, and asked them if they'd be willing to host and give us a place to... Um, to play and they were all for it and said yes absolutely go for it so I you know I'd bring my equipment once a, once a week and did it you know totally pro bono you know didn't get paid for it mm -hmm. and um you know it's just to be able to provide a place like like Harvest did for me yeah. did for you okay mm -hmm. so have you discovered anybody there <laughs> Um, there have been a number of talented um, people of all ages, actually. Sure. The, the, first, the first open mic we did, we had the youngest was an eight-year-old boy who performed, and the oldest was a woman who read poetry um, in her 80s. And it was just fascinating to yeah. me, you know, how many people... I feel like I live in a small community, but I, there was a lot of people that would come to that open mic that I'd never met before and didn't know. So it was really interesting to see. And it was all ages, all levels. We had, you know, my friend Misao Koyama is a classical jazz pianist, and she brought friends and people and connections she knew. So we had, you know, 10-year-old um, violinists come in and play classical music. And we had, yes. you know, people in their 60s playing, you know, cover songs that their favorite cover songs. So it was a really a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I miss it. Yeah. You know, it'll come back. It will. It'll, it will. I agree. Will. So, okay. Um, you have a new album, Above Ground? I did. So, uh, Above Ground is my first one. Let me oh, your first one. Okay. Yes. And I'm going to just hold it up here. Sure, sure. This is the second one, and I mean, it's backwards because of Zoom, but it's called um, Up Around the Bend. Up Around Up the around Bend. Okay. The bend. Up right. Around the Bend. And that, uh, the title of that happened, um, it's, it's the, one of the tracks also, Up Around the Bend. And um, our older daughter attends school in, in Wellesley, Massachusetts, or did. And um, Wellesley campus has this gorgeous uh, pond uh, lake, Lake Wabin, and we were walking around it one day, mm -hmm. and um, as we were walking the path, I saw this, we were walking it right here, and I just thought this was a really pretty picture, so yeah. I took out my cell phone and snapped the picture and posted it to my Facebook and said, you know, we never know what's up around the bend, and somebody said, well, that sounds like a song, you should write it, so I jumped on the challenge and wrote the song, and then the, the rest of the songs, um, followed so there are a number of songs on here angels fly is on there there's another song called 21 steps that i wrote um a few years ago well actually probably 10 years ago i visited arlington and washington dc and the tomb of the unknown soldier mm -hmm. and was very very moved by the dedication of the of the guards the the guys and the women who guard the tomb of the unknown soldier and so did a lot of research and, you know, discovered that, you know, they take 21 steps in front of the tomb. They turn, they pause for 21 seconds, turn, and then walk 21 more the other way, back and forth, you know, for the duration of their, of their shift. Right. And um, so I wrote this tune called 21 Steps, Ballad for the Unknowns, and it's written to the cadence that the soldier walks, which is 72 beats per minute. Okay. And each of the two sections of the chorus contained 21 syllables. So it was kind of a fun writing exercise for me to do, to do that. And it's a, it's a, it's a really cool song, actually. Yeah. Okay. So, great. Well, 
I want to thank you for being on my show. Is there anything you'd like folks to know about? Um, you know, anything coming up on your live stream or, you know, concerts on, on Zoom? or <laughs> Anything you want people to know? I'd love it for, if for people would come and sign up for my newsletter on my website, which is okay. www.kimmoburgmusic.com. And um, I don't send out a ton of newsletters, maybe once every quarter, but when I have, you know, shows coming up, I'll send out a reminder. And also, if you visit my Facebook page, Kim Mulberg Music, I try to do um, live stream. I've been trying to do it every other Wednesday. Okay. While we're doing it here. So um, it would be next Wednesday would be the next one. Okay. So September, what is that? Today's the second. So September Today's 9th. the second. Yep. Yeah, September 9th. And then the um, something that I really hope people will tune into is um, I am one of five finalists in the Connecticut Folk Grassy Hill Emerging Songwriter Competition. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And um, the Connecticut Folk Festival is happening over the uh, 8th, 9th, and 10th, no, okay. 9, 10, and 11 of September, and it's all virtual and online, but on September 10th, that's the night that myself and the other finalists are going to be performing our songs that place, so if people would tune into that, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. There are some very, very talented people that are on the bill that night that are finalists. And, and the cool thing about it is that we're all actually friends, you know, so it's a very, um, like a supportive, it's, it's not a it's competitive competition. It's more like, let's get together and play our songs. Right. Nice. Uh -huh. yeah. Sounds great. Sounds wonderful. Okay. Um, could you uh, play us another song, please? Okay, I'll play the Here Be Dragon song, okay? Oh, excellent. Blood red on her lips And perfume in her hair Well, tonight she'll be a sinner Staring in the review, deciding where to turn. Well, if you play with fire, surely will you burn? Heavy dragons, heavy dragons. She always does the right thing And she always keeps her word But this loneliness and heartbreak It calls the lines to be blurred His eyes go from the border At the point of no return Sparking that old fire Just forever lost Still can't help 
Thank you so much. Thank you. It's <laughs> Thank so you. nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Very nice meeting you, Kim. Um, thanks again for coming on my show. Um, and hope to see you in the near future. Absolutely, yes. I'd love to come play your series when the world gets back to normal. Uh, absolutely. I I'm hoping next uh, next fall yeah. we're going to be doing stuff. So I definitely will be in touch. Good, good. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. Thanks, Kim. All right. Bye-bye. Bye now.